Good evening. I'm thankful to be here. I've been really, really sick, and it's still not over with, but the Lord slowed everything down so I could be here, and I appreciate that. I want to thank him for it. I faced a mountain, a trial of stone. Down in the valley, I felt so alone. Fearing that Satan would tempt and abuse. But God sent sweet comfort with this simple truth. Even the valley is higher ground. Satan can't touch me where God's love abounds. There's not a place where God's hand can't reach down. Even the valley is higher ground. <clears throat> I've soared with eagles and I've fallen low through peaks and through valleys. There's just how life goes. But I found a peace in the midst of despair when I discovered that God is everywhere. <clears throat> Even the valley is higher ground. Satan can't touch me where God's love abounds. There's not a place where God's hand can't reach down. Even the valley is higher ground. Even the valley is higher Amen. Thank you, sis. Even the valley's higher ground. James chapter number five tonight. We will continue in our study in the book of James. And I believe if I hurry along, we will wrap it up tonight. I didn't say we'll make it by seven. I said we'll wrap it up tonight. <laughs> Spin doctor. I learned that from watching TV. Watching our politicians. Father God, as we break the bread of life here tonight, we look at what your, um, what your half-brother here on this earth, you gave to say to us. And Lord, may we take it to heart tonight, and may we take it at face value. In Jesus' name, amen. So last, last week we were looking at uh, just, a, just a fast touch base, not even a recap. Uh, we were looking at verse number 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him do what? But see, it says, if any among you afflicted, let him pray. pray. Let him pray. Now, we can be, aff uh, what I didn't get to touch base on is that affliction, I did tell you, is not the same as being sick. 
because that's separately spoken to in some of the next verses, talking about being sick. Affliction can mean just a number of things. Afflictions can mean a fleshly weakness that we have, right? Okay, we're, so we're, we all have afflictions, all right? Um, you know, my affliction is I take my wife with me to Dairy Queen, and I shouldn't. <laughs> See, we're all afflicted. <laughs> But an affliction is something that uh, I certainly believe that that's something that I go into my closet and pray about, my affliction. Um, the, uh, the affliction is something that I don't broadcast to you all. I don't stick it out in the air for the prince and the power of the air to, to take it and run with it and use it as a device to set me up someplace in my weakness, right? So uh, that I go into my closet and pray about. But so the, the affliction. But we see, is any among you afflicted? Let who? Yeah. You notice it doesn't, I'm not soliciting prayers for my affliction because I'm not going to tell you about them. And, and that's what James is telling us here. <clears throat> he says, is any merry? Let him sing psalms, right? You know. That, you do that outwardly, right? Um, is any sick among you? So we see this separate clarification between affliction and sick. Importantly known, and I brought this out last week, and this is a preacher's verse here, it's because the, the, the world has taught a totally different concept of the church. Nowhere here, in nowhere, you won't find, no one can find me a passage in the Bible, I'm sure of this where it's the pastor's duty to go on visitation. Show it to me if you know of it. Because you know what I'm going to hit you with. Whose job is it? The deacons. Where do we get that? From the word of God, right? Separate you seven men, full of the Holy Ghost, that they wait tables. They go out and do those things while you focus on feeding the flock. Um, I, but if I do it, it's not wrong if I do it, and I do do it, <laughs> so, so, because I also believe I should be an example, at least to a certain degree, so I do that, but is any sick among you, here's another misnomer, we've had this in this church since I've been pastoring here over 10 years now, or 10 years now at least, uh, we've had this, I've run upon this countless times. I can't even tell you how many times. I was sick and the pastor didn't even come to see me. Yeah. Remember that pastor defect thing that I read to you last week? You know, some of you, you got a, you got a new pastor and, and he, he, he doesn't know when somebody's in the hospital if you don't tell him. That's a defect that he had. <laughs> Those kind of things. If any be sick among you, it says, let him call. Let him call. Everybody, no, I, I won't say everybody. I, I believe everybody that was sick that could not be in church today, that wanted to be in church, called me or sent me a text, I'm sick. Or their spouse said, he's sick or she's sick. They let, they let me know. They let me know. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And we talked about that, the elders of the church being, it could be the deacons, it could be, el they could be the title elder, and it can just be the, the senior spiritual men of the church to come and pray, anointing him with oil. We talked about the oil. Olive oil was a big thing. Remember, this, remember the Good Samaritan and what Christ talked about, the oil and the wine and the wound. Uh, oil was... was used as a medicinal purpose. The oil here in no way is there for uh, curing somebody. The oil was a comfort thing. And, uh, and, 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 but it would be the prayers. It would be the Lord who would do the healing. And um, we know that. And the prayer of, and the, in verse 15. So tonight we look at verse 15 and 16, probably all the way through the end of the book if I can get there. And the prayer of the faith the prayer of faith shall do what? Save it. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean 
raise him from the dead. It means just what it says. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. You call, I'm sick. You want us to come pray? Yes. We go pray. We go pray over you. But you have a duty in this too. We all have a duty in this too. The scripture is going to show us this. And the prayer of, of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be what? Forgiven. So sin entered the picture here from here on out, okay, in, in, in what the scripture is telling us. So we realize for James to even speak this, that we can attribute sickness to sin. We can attribute sickness to sin. But we can truly attribute healing of that sickness to sin. And, and, here's, what it mean, and here's what we see. Um, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed, if have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And now the recipe for that comes in. And the recipe is this. Confess, right, your faults. Brother Dave Wilkes' testimony is he broke off a vow, okay? That was not confessing a fault. Confessing your faults are your sins. Our faults are our sins. Confessing our faults. So the obligation is to the sick person who wants God's healing to, is to confess your faults what? So you've called and we've come. And we're going to pray over you. You, it, you have an obligation also. Confess your faults to one another. Now I'm not a Catholic priest, okay? I can't give you uh, uh, absolution. I can't absolve you of your sin. You, and, and only God can do that. I can't even tell you that. Confess your faults one to another. When we confess our sins one to another, we're giving a public confession to our brothers in Christ right there at that time. Where two or more are gathered together, who's with us? Yeah. And, and and confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be what? Healed. You see, there had to be a confession of, of fault, a confession of sin there. If you want the healing, then you better be confessed. I, I, you know, of course, I've learned this in the scriptures long, long, long ago. When I've been out on the couch and I'm shaking like every organ's rattling out of my body from whatever it is that, the sickness that I had, you know, a few weeks ago. While I'm shaking and rattling and rolling inside, you know what I'm doing? I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm going through everything that I can think of under the sun that, that I need to confess to God. And I'm giving it to him and I'm asking him to forgive me and I'm acknowledging my faults and my sins and then I'm asking him to heal me. Um, Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We're to confess that to one another. Faults and sins. Um, turn to 6618 of Psalms for me. I'm going to take you on a, on a quick trail here. Not a real quick trail. You sound like Hank Kimball. <laughs> Psalm 66, 18. Let's get audience participation. Who has that already? Betty, would you read that? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Wow. Wow. Lord, heal me. Heal me. No. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's what his word says. 
Does he really mean that? Um, how about an Isaiah 59.2? Somebody give me an Isaiah 59.2 tonight. Isaiah 59.2. You got it, Sarah? Boy, you're going for it. Good girl. Read loud so everybody can hear you. Yeah, your iniquities have separated you from God, that he's hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Listen, grace didn't erase any of that. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Grace did not erase any of that. If anybody's taught you that, you, better, you go back and tell them they sold you a, salt, a false bill of goods because we're reading the word of God here. What James tells us to do, we want to be healed, when we're sick, we better be confessing our faults and our sins. Otherwise, don't even bother asking. Don't even bother asking. That's, that's a tough sell, isn't it? What do we do? We right away, oh, God will hear me. No, he won't. He's Satan that he won't. Nothing unholy comes before the Lord. Get, confess your sins. Confess my sins. Get them out of the way. Then come to him and ask him. Go boldly before his throne then. Amen? So, so how about... Uh, uh, the book of John, chapter 9, verse 31. Somebody grab that? John 9, 31. Linda, you've got it? Was that John 9, 31? <laughs> that was free. I like it. He heareth not sinners, and if any man be a worshiper for God, and there's two elements there, doeth his, then he'll hear you. Then he'll hear you. There's no deal making with the Lord. It's his way or the highway. There's no deal making. We can't make deals with the Lord. He has etched it in stone. That's the way it is. So we wonder what sometimes, Lord, why won't you heal me? Why won't you heal me? Well, maybe we got unconfessed sin and we haven't given to him. Uh, that's always possible. It doesn't. That doesn't. It doesn't guarantee you're going to be healed. He may want to use you just the way you are, sick and messed up. <laughs> uh, let's let's all go over to First Peter chapter three together. And and this, you talk about a difficult thing. If you can imagine being a pastor. Or being just a man of God, period, or a woman of the Lord, and you're sitting with somebody that's a husband, and he's sitting there clinging to his wife who is desperately ill at her bedside or at her hospital side, and he is praying for her. But you know the way he lives his life He's one of those guys that every Sunday his wife's in church and he's not. And you know that. But now he's at risk at losing something that's near and dear to his heart. And he's crying out to God. But what he's not doing, he's not worshiping God and he's not in God's will. And all up until that time, there's other things that he's not doing either because he's not being a godly husband, is he? So there's other things. So as we see that, we look at chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, here's, here's, be in subjection unto your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your, your chaste conversation coupled with fear, Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold, putting on the apparel of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek, quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection 
unto their own husbands. Am I reading in the New Testament? Am I reading in the age of grace? Okay, I just wanted to check. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters are ye, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as what? Being heirs. Being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Be not hindered. So even a man that knows the Lord as his Savior, if he can't do those things, his prayer is hindered. And he can sit there and he can call and call and call as he wants. His prayers are, what are they? Hindered. hindered. He's in the way of his own prayers. His own pride is in the way of his own prayer. So there's much more that goes to that. You know, I, uh, we watch, you may watch the, the 11 o'clock news tonight. I'll watch the 10 o'clock. <laughs> um, and, you know, they're in, they're in our prayers. Okay, and uh, so, so, so. And what the, all the passages of scripture I read you, I just gotta tell you, are about as popular today as, as, as submarines on the, the screen door on a submarine, right? In, in, in this world and in the, in the world of, uh, we live in today. But, unto the weaker vessel. Had this conversation with somebody the other day. Uh, I was talking with, my wife was with me, and I was talking with her. Where was Adam when Eve answered the serpent and said, he said we're not to eat, we can eat of any tree of the garden but one, but one. Where was Adam? Could Adam have stopped her? Absolutely he could have. Absolutely he could have. Did he? No. You say what you want to say, but I can tell you that this comes through cop training, okay, over the years also. But it also comes through personal life experience. And God, it also comes from God. What did God call the wife? The weaker vessel. Don't take it as an insult. Take it as a fact. God said, that woman is the weaker vessel. It was proven with Eve, wasn't it? She's the one that did. How about, what's, the sh what's one of the shortest verses in the Bible? Three words. Three words. That's good. That wasn't the one I was looking for. Can't you remember? There you go. Remember Lot's wife. I could preach a two-hour sermon on those three words. And you can say, I don't doubt that. <laughs> remember Lot's wife. What are we to remember about that? Was not, was not Lot a righteous man according to the scripture? Yeah, he was a righteous man, but the problem was he, he fell into the flesh, didn't he? He, he stepped back. Did Lot, did Lot, was Lot not told don't look back? Was his whole family not told that? Was everybody that, that uh, don't look, lest ye be what? Turn to a, yeah, even, even, even the penalty God told him. So, what happened? Remember Lot's wife. She turned around and looked back. Why? Why? Because she's the what vessel? So, where was Lot? Where was Lot? Lot? 
my wife and I talk about this. We use this illustration in, in the person we were talking with. It gets dark, nighttime, it's dark here at the church. We're leaving the church. Who goes out the door first? And I'm staying in the what? In the shadows. And then when I look around, I bring her. Right? So I'm surveying every step I'm going to go to. Then if we're driving separately, if we're driving separately home, we both are driving a vehicle. Who follows who, honey? Every time. Every time. Because then I'm right there, no matter where she goes, and I'm right there behind her. Imagine if Adam would have done that. Imagine if Lot would have done that. But they didn't. They did not acknowledge these are the, they did not have the knowledge that pre Peter's talking about here. You got you to gotta have knowledge that they're the weaker vessel. You got to watch out for you and them, right? What did Christ say? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church in so much that he did what? He gave himself for it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the husband, we're the bride. So, so the same thing there. Um, the weaker vessel. Here's the thing I was going to say, then I thought, I well, I won't, but now I'm going to say it anyway. So I'm just not listening to myself. Come, let us reason together. <laughs> I use this illustration. I told the person that if I set down five salt shakers on the table. And I got a lady sitting there and I tell her, don't pick up that one. Don't look at the bottom of that one. And I leave the room. Ladies, what's going to happen? What's going to happen, ladies? You're going to look at the bottom of that one when I've left the room. Inevitably. And I'll leave you set there long enough, you're going to reach over there and go. <laughs> Guys? <laughs> okay, I won't. <laughs> okay, I won't. Have knowledge. Have knowledge of that weaker vessel, otherwise your prayers will be hindered. It's a thinking man's game, right? God's saying, hey, guys. I created you from the dust of the earth. Where did I get her? From you. I took a part of you. Whoa, man, I took a part of you. You are not the same. You are not equal. None of those things in God's eyes. He has a pecking order. He has a pecking order. That's why he said, ladies, cover your head with hair. Don't look like a guy. Don't usurp the authority of the man. That's why he said, men, you don't have any cover on your head. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I heard that. Because there is nobody between you and God. But with the woman between her and God, there is the, the man. Yes. And that's, what, that's from the word of God. And boy, there's a lot of lady Christians who don't like that. And I say, too bad. <laughs> so back to James. So he goes on to explain this, and he says, look. He didn't use the word look. In verse 17, he says, Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as what? We are. we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit, brethren. If any of you, who's he saying? 
Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one do what? Now, that convert him does not mean like converting the lost. He said, brethren, if any of you do what? In other words, you were once in the truth, but you've erred in the truth. You've moved away from it. So it's the brethren's job to do what? Kick him in the tail. Rebuke. Admonish. Right? That's what the Bible says we're supposed to do. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. What have we been talking about here? Sickness, right? Sickness. Sickness. We're not talking about losing salvation. We're talking about sickness. And shall hide a multitude of sins. Why? Because you've confessed them one to another. And you've, then you've got those out of the way. Then you've earnestly prayed a the fervent prayer of a righteous man. Then it's heard. It's so powerful that Elijah was able to make it stop raining for three years and six months and then called upon it again and got rain. That's how powerful that prayer can be. End of story. End of story. Eight off, I'm going to give you the night off. Docking your pay, though. We got some grace, right? First verse, you ready? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. T'was blind, but now I see. Heavenly Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we approach your throne of grace, we thank you for the amazing grace. We thank you for the, 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 the word of God. We thank you that we have the hearts of that want to absorb this. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who indwells us and seals us till the day of redemption. Lord God, as we go about our way tonight, may each and every one go with your powerful, mighty, mighty blessings. May we confess our faults one to another. Lord, may we, may we ask for forgiveness of our sins and recognize those and realize all of these things. That can impede our prayers, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.